Hey guys, it's Tito here. Uh, today we're going to be installing a torque lift eco hitch. It's a two inch uh, hitch receiver on our 2014 Jetta Sport Wagon. Um, it's a fairly straightforward install besides a few hiccups uh, in the installation, but um, right here we'll do a quick setup on how we uh, installed it on our Sport Wagon. Uh, so to start, we jacked up the car, um, placing it on jack stands. Um, we found it best to jack it up from the control arms was the only location point as you'll want to put the jack stands on the pinch welds along the rocker panels. Next, you're going to want to start by uh, pulling out everything from the driver side. There's a storage compartment in there. Um, in that storage compartment, you'll find a little cloth uh, flap. You'll want to have to pull that back. That'll expose all of the hardware needed to pull out the rear taillight. Um, you can accomplish this with a 5 8 deep, so deep socket. We used a 3 8 ratchet. Um, we can undo those real quick and you'll want to also disconnect the connector on the back of the light um, This connector is just responsible for all your um, lighting obviously Gently remove the tail light from the back of the car. Um, you'll want to twist and you'll look at where the screws go into the car so you have a better idea of how it's going to slide out of the car. Uh, you're going to want to do this very gently as to not scratch any of the body panels. From here we'll move on to the passenger side. There's another little access door in the back uh, corner. Um, from here it's the same situation, 5 8 deep socket and remove the uh, clip that contains the wiring that goes to the tail end. Now you can remove the rear bumper by starting with a size 30 Torx. Um, there's screws located where the taillight were, which is the re reason why we took out the taillights to begin with. Picking up the car has allowed us a access to the inner fender well. This is where we can access all of these screws. Uh, they're size 25 Torx. Uh, this holds the mud flap as well as the rear bumper. So you'll need to remove all three of these screws along with two clips. Uh, the clips can also be easily removed by a flat screwdriver. Don't forget the size 25 Torx located on the bottom of the mud flap that will also be needed to remove the mud flap.
repeat the same thing that you did on the driver side and the passenger side. So uh, there's going to be three Torx screws on this side and one on the bottom. At this point, you're going to want to use a very small screwdriver. There's a push pin located on the, between the fender and the bumper. Um, you can push it out with the screwdriver, and that will allow you to remove the rear bumper. Um, and then next, on the bottom of the car, the size 30 Torx, um, you'll need to remove all of these to take the rear bumper off. To remove the rear bumper, you're going to want to push back towards the back of the car. Um, this will allow it to pop out. Um, and then you're going to need a hand just removing the bumper. You don't want to drop it on the ground or scratch it. So um, just grab a hand and pull back and remove it from the car. You'll find a soft foam bumper, 5 mile per hour bumper on the back of the car. You'll need to pull this off. It's only held on with adhesive, so pull it right off. It's uh, extra sticky, so be careful not to get it on your hands. Um, this rear bumper bar is held on by a half inch uh, bolts. You'll need to remove these bolts. There's three on the passenger side and two on the driver's side. In order to mount the rear hitch, you'll need to bend the small tabs on the rear bumper bar. Um, this will allow it to mate smoothly with the hitch. Um, next, you'll never need to remove the rear muffler um, mount. Um, it's just a rubber uh, hanger, and you'll need to spray it with WD-40 to allow it to come out a little easier. And then, simply by hand, you can pop it off the hanger. Next, you'll need to remove the exhaust shield located above the muffler. Uh, the exhaust shield is held on with these um, kind of cheap, chintzy little nuts. I pried it off with a screwdriver. You probably shouldn't do that, but it did work. Next, you can work on installing the hitch to the car. Um, a jack works very well for holding the hitch up where it needs to be. Uh, you can install it to the car with the supplied hardware and the spacers pending your application. They supply you with spacers uh, to put between the uh, hitch and the bumper in order to provide extra clearance. Uh, in our scenario, we had to use it. So um, we also found the hardware to be a little incorrect. We ended up having to supply our own uh, three quarter inch bolts to fit the uh, hitch to the frame on the inside and then uh, snug it down with a torque wrench to the specified value. Um, some may find this not necessary as it will come and be a perfect fit, uh, but for us we found that the hardware was incorrect and uh, may want to consult the manufacturer if you have any questions regarding your particular application.
The installation of the hitch, you'll need to cut out a section of the bumper to allow clearance for the hitch. Uh, they supply you with a five by four, five and a quarter by four and a half inch template. Uh, definitely wasn't long enough. So we kind of used our own template. And as you can see, we actually gone a little bit past the body line um, to allow it clearance. And this, we found this to be just the perfect amount. Now you can attach the supplied trim. Uh, it's just a simple push trim. You can separate a little bit and just push it on there. It really gives it a nice clean finished look. Um, you don't see this with a lot of manufacturers, so it was really nice to see a quite finished system. It would have just been better if they supplied the right hardware. And then that's about it. Um, this is just a quick time lapse. It's just a reverse of this assembly. Um, you can screw everything back down. Uh, you'll need another hand to get the bumper back on and push towards the car this time instead of away.